Welcome to Starbound, where every star tells a story. In a universe teeming with relics of civilizations long past, what could a distress signal hidden in a forgotten progenitor outpost portend for humanity? Let's get into the story. My bones vibrated to the thrum of the old freighter's engines, the familiar discomfort like a worn-in glove. I wasn't the sentimental type, but the Starhound held a special place in my fuel-stained heart. Salvaging relics left by civilizations long gone was my trade. My crew, a motley cast of characters brought together by necessity and a thirst for those forgotten treasures. The lead whispered of progenitor tech, ancient, powerful, and probably cursed. That sweet spot for a veteran scavenger like myself. Trouble always came with that kind of price, but a good meal or a warm bed were luxuries I hadn't known for a long time. Jax, came Torres' voice, clipped and laced with her trademark pragmatism. We're approaching the coordinates. The system doesn't even show up on alliance charts. An uncharted system. Just how I liked them. That's the point, Torres, I grumbled. Progenitors wouldn't leave a neon sign to their top secret goodies, would they? Just saying, there's probably a reason this place is forgotten. Her brow furrowed, a familiar sight that I'd learned to read as caution tinged with reluctant curiosity. We dropped out of warp, the sight slamming into me like a stun blast. It wasn't a planet, but what looked like a gigantic shipyard. A skeletal ring encircling a dead star. It was a marvel of engineering, the scale almost incomprehensible. My mind raced. This was no minor outpost. Progenitors don't do anything small, Jax, said Ike, the old tinkerer. A brilliant mind held back by a bad case of the shakes and a drinking problem to match. He'd been the one to decipher the coordinates from a half-fried data core back on Titan. This is a big one. Torres, prep the shuttles. I barked, my voice cutting through the awe. Ike, you're running diagnostics on that signal. The rest of you, gear up. This is what you sweat for, boys and girls. It's time to hunt for ghost parts. The landing was rough. The shuttle bucked in the thin atmosphere, sending gear flying. A chorus of curses rose from the bay. I love this part. The adrenaline jitters melting away, replaced by clear focus that came before score. The complex was colossal, a tangle of metallic vines clinging to the side of the massive ring, a city clinging to the corpse of a world. I'd never seen progenitor architecture up close. It was stark, brutal, beautiful in its own alien way. The air was still, almost oppressive. Jax, whispered I, clutching his scanner like a lucky charm. This place is dead, and a single active energy signature. My gut twisted. Abandoned? And that wasn't in the playbook. Now, let's not get ahead of ourselves, I said, keeping my voice even. I didn't like surprises, not one bit. The further we ventured, the more unsettling the silence became. We swept our lights over the smooth, featureless walls, the metal cold to the touch. It felt wrong, like walking into a tomb. What the hell happened here? muttered Finn, our demolitions expert. His usual cocky demeanor was replaced by an uneasy frown. Torres tapped her helmet. No interface, no comm signature, not so much as a stray transmission. The signal, the one that had led us here, grew stronger with each step. I pushed on, the potential reward outweighing the growing sense of dread. We reached a vast chamber, the signal peaking like a madman's heartbeat. At its center stood a monolith of dark crystal shimmering with veins of energy. It was hypnotic, a siren's call promising knowledge, power, and danger. Torres took a step closer, her scanner crackling. The signal's coming from inside, and whatever it is, it's shielded. Ike, you genius, I said, hoping my voice didn't betray the worry clawing at my insides. Can you crack it? The old technician hunched over, his brow beaded with sweat. Encrypted? Progenitor origin? This is complex, Jack. It might take me a while. Time was the only thing I knew we didn't have. Do what you can. Torres, Finn, set up a perimeter. The rest of you, let's see what else this ghost palace has to offer. They scattered, leaving me alone with the monolith. It pulsed with a strange rhythm, almost like breathing. Foolishly, I reached out, my fingers brushing the cool surface. It hummed beneath my touch. Jax! Ike's voice crackled over the comms. I've got something, but it ain't good. This is a distress signal, an automated beacon, repeating. The signal cut off. My blood ran cold. What is it, Ike? The progenitors sent this. They say... They say... His voice faltered. Say what, damn it? They say that humanity has breached a threshold. He choked out. 
They call it an evolution trigger. This beacon, it's a death warrant, Jax. My mind was a whirlwind. A death warrant? For humanity? Just because we had gotten too good at what we did? Surviving, growing, and reaching? Where was the scent? I back to progenitor home territory? Some kind of warning? I asked, already running through the limited options in my head. No, Ike replied, the gravity of his voice a lead weight. That beacon, it wasn't aimed outwards. The calm went silent for a stretch too long, leaving me to grapple with the chilling implication. Jax, he finally began, his voice thick. It's a kill order, transmitted to every progenitor outpost and neighboring systems. Earth's in range. The shuttle back to the Starhound was a blur. I barely saw the worried faces of my crew, barely heard their questions. The silence in my mind was deafening as I wrestled with the scope of what we had stumbled upon. Not just a lost treasure, but a harbinger of annihilation aimed at a pale blue dot I called home. There would be no easy salvage, no payout at the end of this rainbow. The progenitor's fear had set into motion a chain of events that could snuff out billions of lives. My life, the, the lives of everyone I cared about. Landing the Starhound, I felt the familiar mix of anger and resolve. Damn the progenitors and their paranoia. We weren't some unstoppable plague to be wiped out. We were scrappy, adaptable, and damn good at surviving. Torres set a course back to Alliance Space, full burn. I ordered my voice cold, hard. We're going home. But Jax, the... She began. I cut her off. Forget the damn data core. Leave it. Our score just got a whole lot bigger. We roared through hyperspace, every hour taking me closer to a war I hadn't sought but wouldn't shy away from. Information was our only weapon now. We needed to warn Earth. The Starhound punched back into normal space just on the edge of Alliance territory. The familiar feeling of home, the teeming stations and the bustling traffic lanes was a sobering sight now. Oblivious sheep heading straight into the slaughterhouse. Jax, I'm picking up chatter on the military bands, Torres said, her tone grim. Something's happening. Fear clenched my gut as I listened. Not just random chatter, disjointed reports, bursts of calm traffic filled with panic and confusion. Progenitor strike force sightings. They were already coming. Time dissolved, scrambling for an official line, bribing old contacts, even cold calling Alliance Command yielded nothing but suspicion and delays. Bureaucracy wasn't built for a countdown to extinction. They wouldn't listen to scavengers, abandoned misfits on a beat-up freighter. Desperation fueled me. The Alliance might be deaf, but there were others who would listen, others who knew the price of complacency. Torres, set a course for Titan, I barked. It's time to pay a visit to some old friends. Titan, the industrial heart of human space, was a sprawling network of grimy refineries and shipyards. It was also home to the Free Traders Guild. Like me, they existed on the fringes of respectable society, bound together by necessity and a deep mistrust of authority. Unlike me, they had the money and the connections to be heard. Docking was a rough affair, as always. Titan lived by its own rules, and official alliance vessels rarely dared venture this deep into the guild's territory. Stepping off the ramp, I felt the familiar pang of nostalgia mixed with a gut-churning sense of urgency. This was my old stomping ground before going rogue, before the incident that earned me a permanent spot on the Alliance's blacklist. The Black Lotus, the guild's unofficial headquarters, reeked of power and ill-gotten gains. It was an ostentatious monstrosity, all gleaming chrome and smoked glass, a middle finger to the drab utilitarianism of Alliance installations. My boots clicked on the polished marble floor, heads turned, whispers spreading like wildfire before the bouncers closed in. Brody, came a smooth voice from the shadows. A woman emerged, sleek and dangerous, the guild insignia glittering on her lapel. Fancy seeing you out of your hole, scavenger. It was Anya, my old flame and even older rival. We'd shared more than a few good runs and just as many bitter arguments followed by stolen kisses. Anya, I acknowledge keeping my voice level. I'm here on business. Urgent business. Her laugh rang out sharp and skeptical. <laughs> urgent enough to make you crawl back to Titan? Before I could answer, news feeds blared from a nearby screen. The chillingly familiar progenitor architecture smoke billowing from an orbital defense platform. Earth was under attack. The guild council chamber erupted in pandemonium. I pushed past Anya, my gaze locked on the largest screen. 
News anchor spouted words I could barely hear over the rising fear in my own head. Invasion. Extermination. Overwhelming force. Cities reduced to rubble, faces frozen in terror flickering across the feed. These were my people, facing a nightmare I had witnessed firsthand. Bile rose in my throat. This is why I'm here, Anya, I said, turning to face her. The mirth was gone from her eyes. The progenitors are coming to wipe us out, and I know why. The guild council chamber was an odd mix of chaos and calm. Traders bellowed, analysts ran panic calculations, and in the center of it all sat the guild leadership, cool, calculating, always sizing up the angles. The scavenger's got a lot of guts. <laughs> Coming here with a fairy tale like that. One council member sneered, his diamond-studded earlobe glinting in the artificial light. Anya held up a hand, silencing him. Jackson Brody doesn't make a habit of wasting time, and neither do I. She said, her voice cutting through the din. Let the man speak. I didn't need a second invitation. I outlined our discovery, Ike's frantic decoding, the progenitor's chilling distress beacon. Every eye in the room was on me. Their gaze is a mix of skepticism, greed, and a flicker of something I recognize all too well. Fear. We have to warn Earth. I finished my voice hoarse. But the Alliance won't listen. The Guild has the reach, the clout. The clout to start a war with one of the oldest powers in the galaxy. Another council member interrupted, his voice dripping with disdain. And based on what? The word of a wanted scavenger? Anya glared at him. Jackson may be an ex-con, but I've known him longer than you've been sucking in your mama's teats, Corin. He's good at sniffing out trouble, even better at getting out of it. And what he found there... Her voice trailed off, her usual confidence laced with a new edge. The progenitors have always been distant. An elderly woman spoke, her paper-thin skin stretched tight across her skull. They don't meddle, they watch. What could humanity have done to provoke them? We're... Good at surviving, I admitted. Expanding, colonizing, always pushing those boundaries. Maybe they see it as a threat. A pathetic species reaching too high. The woman mused, her eyes distant. They eradicated Thraxian hives for less. I felt my blood run cold. The Thraxian genocide was a grim footnote in galactic history. A whole race snuffed out in their infancy for some unknown transgression against the progenitors. If they viewed humanity the same way... We can't sit here and wait for them to finish the job on Earth, I pressed, frustration rising in my voice. The progenitors are coming, and they have to be stopped. And how do you propose we do that? Corin scoffed. Throw rocks? The guild has resources, I gritted out. Ships, weapons, connections with mercenary bands, alien races the progenitors look down on. With all of that... We might stand a fighting chance. The guild council chamber was never known for its quiet contemplation. This time, however, the silence was deafening. Profit was their usual motivator, yet now they stared at something far more potent. Extinction. Mercenaries? A aliens? Corn sputtered, his face turning a sickly shade. We do business, so we not wage wars. Anya's hand descended on his shoulder with chilling precision. Do you now, Corin? You do whatever it takes to ensure your accounts stay fat. If that means fighting the damn progenitors, then so be it. There are no profits to be had from a dead earth. Her words struck a chord. Mutters rose, glances were exchanged. The guild, for all their flaws, were survivors. They'd clawed their way to power, skirting laws and bending rules. But now their very survival was at stake. Jackson, you brought us a gift. A voice boomed from the far end of the table. It was the old woman, her eyes glittering beneath bushy brows. They say a good scavenger always finds something of value. Provoking the progenitors is not what I would call valuable, retorted Corin. But the defiance in his voice was weakening. Earth is burning, I pressed on. Our families, our friends are dying as we speak. While you bicker like petulant children, the progenitors are tightening their grip. The old woman stood, her frail form suddenly imposing. He speaks the truth. We have grown complacent, profiting from the fragile peace these past decades. But true power, she rasped. Lying to the rest of the council, she announced. 
We will not stand idly by and be judged the same way as those spineless alliance buffoons. The guild will stand with Earth. It's time to remind the galaxy why, when someone wants a job done right, they come to us. A cheer went up, tentative at first, then growing in volume. Desperation and a newfound hunger for survival filled the chamber. The guild was nothing if not adaptable. Anya, gather your best strategists, the old woman commanded. Contact the usual suspects. It's time to go to war. Anya's eyes met mine, a spark of dark amusement within them. Back in the game, Jax? Damn right, I snarled. This time the stakes are way higher. Let's see what this band of misfits can do against the big bad galaxy. Titan became a hive, the Black Lotus a buzzing nest of frantic preparation. The guild, famed for its labyrinthine dealings, now displayed a ruthless sufficiency born of desperation. I barely had time to breathe before I was swept into the storm. My scavenging skills repurposed to assess supplies and potential weapon caches. My first reunion was with Ike, hunched over a mountain of salvaged tech, his eyes bloodshot. Jax, this is madness, he croaked, gesturing in the makeshift command center around him. We're talking about fighting a war we know nothing about. I couldn't disagree, yet as I watched grizzled mercenaries being outfitted with gleaming guild weapons, sleek alien fighters docking and joining the makeshift fleet in orbit, there was a strange exhilaration mixed with the dread. We're good at adapting, Ike, I replied, trying to convince myself as much as him. Humans are always at their best when their back's against their wall. His gaze drifted skywards towards Earth hung a fragile gem besieged. They think this is about profit, Jax. A chance to prove themselves. He coughed a rattling wheeze. <coughs> but I see it in your eyes. This is personal. It was. Every city under siege, every panicked newscast was a blow to the gut. These were my people, and it was because of my discovery that they now faced an intergalactic executioner. Anya found me later, a whirlwind of energy barely contained in her immaculate power suit. A fleet is assembling, she reported, her eyes dancing with adrenaline. Mercenaries, ex-alliance, even a few idealists lured by the guild's promise of payment. The promise of survival, I corrected her. She offered a wry smile. It's the same in the end. It's what the guild does best. We tip the scales in our favor, no matter the cost. What about Earth? I asked. Any word from the Alliance? Her face darkened. Hmm. Fragmentary at best. They're holding, but barely. The progenitors hit hard and fast. It's a bloodbath out there, Jax. I swore under my breath. We were out of time. What's our first move? We're running a gamble, Anya admitted. Using old guild smuggling routes to slip past progenitor patrols, strike at one of their forward bases, disrupt their comm, steal any intel we can before retreating. It's a long shot, but we have to start somewhere. She grinned, a flash of her old, reckless self. Hope you haven't gotten too comfortable flying that old rust bucket, Jax. You're leading the charge. The Starhound roared at the head of the ragtag fleet. Guild flagships sleek and menacing flew beside salvaged battleships and a surprising array of alien vessels drawn to the cause, a testament to the progenitor's long history of arrogant dominance. We slipped through the shadows of space, charting a perilous course along forgotten shipping lanes, Every tremor, every flicker of the scanner set my pulse jackrabbiting. Behind any asteroid could lurk a progenitor patrol. This is insane, Torres murmured, her usually stoic face drawn. We're barely two systems out and already hunted. They caught Earth flat-footed, I replied grimly. They won't make the same mistake twice. The days blurred into a haze of hushed orders and nervous jumps. Even the old excitement of a dangerous run was tarnished by the stakes. This wasn't about profit, about dodging authorities. It was about saving lives, buying time, or dying horribly in the attempt. Finally, on the edge of progenitor claimed territory, our target materialized. A fortified asteroid belt studded with weapon emplacements and sensor arrays. A spider's web waiting to ensnare its prey. All right, people, I barked into the comm. Remember the plan. In and out, fast and clean. We're not here for a stand-up fight. I could hear the tension, like a live wire buzzing through the crew. This makeshift fleet was armed to the teeth, but untested. And we were about to face an enemy that had outlived empires, a force that viewed humanity as a pest. Showtime, 
muttered Finn, his face a mask of grim determination. The Starhound led the charge, weaving through the debris field. Laser fire speared through the darkness, striking debris and thankfully missing our ragtag squadron. Evasive maneuvers, I shouted, throwing the old freighter into a reckless dive. Around us, the organized chaos of battle erupted. Guild gunships unleashed a storm of missiles, alien frigates danced through the crossfire, and explosions flared like angry stars against the inky backdrop. I guided the Starhound through a gap in the defenses, maneuvering as a progenitor cruiser lumbered into sight, its weapons blazing. A mercenary gunship wasn't so lucky. It was reduced to a burning hulk in a flash of brutal efficiency. Torres, get us to that docking bay, I ordered, marking a cluster of sensor arrays. Ike, Finn, prep for demolition. We're taking that comm station offline. Docking was a less graceful maneuver and more of a controlled crash. The Starhound shuddered, alarms blaring as its hull scraped against the cold metal of the asteroid base. Subtlety has never been your strong suit, has it? Torres hissed over the comms as we rushed into the fray. The interior of the base was sterile, almost clinical in its design. I felt the urge to pause in morbid curiosity. The need to crack the progenitor's secrets wide open ward with the urgency of the moment. Jax, the signal's getting stronger. Ike's voice rasped to a mix of excitement and fear. They're on to us. We need to move. Every corridor seemed eerily the same, a testament to the progenitor's unyielding efficiency. Yet they had underestimated us, the messy chaos that defined humanity. The first progenitor patrol we met fell not to strategy, but to a combination of Finn's expertly placed explosives and Torres's unmatched marksmanship. Their sleek armor was no match for the raw power and grim resolve of those fighting for survival. We finally burst into the comms chamber, a vast dome filled with humming consoles and massive data banks. Progenitor sentries swarmed us, sleek weapons spitting a deadly light. Ike, do your thing! I called, weaving through a hail of blaster fire, taking cover behind an overturned console. Torres, a whirlwind in motion, down two more sentries with unsettling precision. Just a moment! I cried, hunching over a control panel, his hands flying over the alien interface. Their encryption is complex. Devilishly so. Their entries closed in, our motley band facing a certain death. And then it happened. A chilling screech pierced the air. The lights flickered, consoles sparked, and the sentries froze, their weapons sputtering. What in the hell? Finn began, but I didn't let him finish. Ike, did you do that? A hacking cough turned into a giddy cackle. <laughs> Oh, well, not entirely. Turns out, while I was fiddling, we stumbled upon something big. Very big. This whole station seems to be powered by an ancient experimental core. He raised his voice over the mayhem. And I just gave it a... a nudge. <laughs> the overload came a moment later. The comm station exploded in a blinding flash, the progenitor core venting arcs of energy that vaporized anything in its path. I was thrown backwards, my ears ringing, vision blurring. Coughing, I scrambled back to my feet. Ike stood amidst the ruins, a maniacal grin plastered on his face. Torres helped Finn up, his singed hair giving him a bewildered appearance. Run! I shouted. We escaped through a maze of collapsing corridors, the enraged wail of alarms our parting gift to the progenitors. They had underestimated us once. We wouldn't give them the chance to do it again. The retreat was a blur of adrenaline and controlled panic. We abandoned the crippled Starhound, commandeering a sleek progenitor shuttle just as an asteroid base erupted behind us. The journey back to Titan was a sober one. Our victory was fleeting. The cost tallied in lives lost, yet amid the ashes there was a flicker of hope. We fried their comms. Uh, it'll buy her some time, Torres offered, but her voice lacked its usual certainty. But for how long, I retorted. The guild and its ramshackle fleet had dealt a blow, but in the vastness of a galactic war, it was a mere sting to an awakened bear. Ike's eyes shone with a haunted brilliance as he fiddled with a salvage progenitor data pad. We got something, Jax. More than just offline comms. And that comm spike before the core went. He trailed off, shaking his head in disbelief. Progenitor fleet movements, troop deployments. It's a tactical treasure trove. Anya met my gaze as Ike's declaration sunk in. This changes things. We finally have something to fight with besides blind courage. The Black Lotus hummed with renewed activity upon our return. Analysts hunched over the stolen data, poring over progenitor strategy sessions and communication intercepts. They're underestimating us, Jax. Anya moosed with a predatory smile. Their response is measured, systematic. They still see us as an infestation and not an organized threat. 
Arrogance is the downfall of empires, I retorted, a taste of the words bitter on my tongue. My discovery, the one that had sparked all of this, was built on that same fatal pride. We bleed them dry, the ancient guild leader rasped, studying a vast holographic map of contested systems. Hit and run tactics lure their heavy ships into traps, exploit their overconfidence. Her gaze bored into me. They will learn their mistake. The following days were a calculated dance of death. The guild fleet, nimble and unexpected, struck with vicious intent. We ambushed supply convoys, sabotaged outposts, and sparked rebellions in progenitor occupied human colonies. With every victory, every desperate stand, a strange feeling grew in my chest. Pride. It wasn't for myself, but for the crew. For the mercenaries and smugglers who found themselves on the right side of history. For the countless faces on those news feeds fighting tooth and nail back on Earth. Progenitor transmissions grew angrier, confusion bleeding into their usual cold arrogance. Humanity, unruly and tenacious, was becoming a far more dangerous pest than they had ever anticipated. One night in a stolen moment of respite, I found myself on the observation deck of a guild cruiser. Exhaustion battled with the relentless churn of my mind. Can't sleep? Anya leaned against the railing, a silhouette against the swirling nebula. Too much to do. Too many people counting on us. My voice felt hollow, even to my own ears. You haven't been back to Earth, have you? Her question was less accusatory and more an observation. I shook my head. No time. Besides, <laughs> I laughed bitterly. I'm still on the Alliance's most wanted list. Imagine the welcome I'd get. A gentle hand touched my shoulder. You'll get a hero's parade, Jax, when this is all over. A cold certainty settled within me. And if it isn't, I asked softly. She turned, met my gaze with an intensity that mirrored my own and will have died giving humanity a fighting chance. And trust me, a fierce smile bloomed. That's better than most people get.